Hey YouTube, my name's Danita. Thanks for coming to my platform. And I'm just so excited about just talking about, you know, steal the seed of the soul. And you know, I've been really thinking about this and you know, the videos that I have put up and everything, you know, was pretty much giving you my understanding of what I've come through. And, you know, referring to the seat of the soul with some of the information that he had talked about, which to me is just so phenomenal because it comes into alignment of me understanding who I really am. Because that was my whole purpose in coming to coming to understand who I really am. When I was going through my awakening, I didn't know what was going on and what was transpiring. But... I got through it, through my guides and my spirits, guides helping me, my teachers helping me, my spirit teachers helping me, you know, you know, people through, you know, YouTube, some of the videos I've heard, the books I've read, I mean, the practices that I've put in place for myself, everything has brought me to this place. And when I came across this, this book called The Seat of the Soul by Gary Zukeva, you know, a lot of different parts of this book really illuminated to me and really came, it really made me come to understand how we operate as spiritual beings, as human beings. I mean, all of it coincides together. But when you don't know how it operates, you create, you can create chaos in your life or you can create a heaven on earth in your life. It all depends on how you operating through your words and through your thoughts. So it was a part in the book that I read that really kind of blessed me. It's in um, chapter eight, Intentions 2. This is really kind of like a part two because I got caught off on my last video that I did. But um, I just wanted to just share a little bit of it and how I interpreted when it came to my awakening and what I've learned how to be mindful of how I operate in my life when it comes to my thoughts and my words and the, the way that I treat others. So um, I just want to read this paragraph to you. And it says, the creation of physical experience through intention, the infusion of light into form, energy into matter, soul into body are all the same. The distance between you and your understanding of creation of matter from energy is equal to the distance that exists between the awareness of your personality and the energy of your soul. Okay, that blessed me. But this one really kind of blessed me too. It says the dynamic of soul and personality is the same dynamic. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same dynamic. As energy converts into matter. Okay, it's the, the, the dynamic of soul and personality is the same dynamic as energy converting into matter. The system is identical. Okay. Your body is your conscious matter. Your body, this right here is your conscious matter. Taste. Feel, touch, smell, all you can, you are aware of that. That's a conscious awareness of your body and the matter that you can feel, taste, touch, and all of that. I'm like, okay, I get that. I understand that now, you know? And then he talks about your personality is the energy of your soul converted to matter. Now, that's something I had to kind of meditate on, and it might be simple to other people, but, you know, I just like to kind of just get some enlightenment on what God might be trying to tell me about this, too. And what he showed me was, you know, our soul is energy. It's energy. It's energy. And, you know, because it's energy in the beginning in Genesis, when God said in Genesis 2 and 7, that God breathed the breath of life into man and made man a living soul. So the soul of a man is really a part of God. And God is nothing but energy. God is energy. You can't see him. You can't touch him. But you can feel him. You can feel him. Okay. So when I read that part of it. 
he came and said that now if you are unaware, if you are unaware that your soul is energy, that your soul is energy and it converts into matter. Okay, if you're unaware of that, your soul, you, 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 you have, it is the splinterness that is transmitted. Now I looked up splinterness and it's like fragments, fractions, something that's um, scattered. You know, your soul is scattered. It's not whole. So when it's scattered, it's like you got so many different pieces everywhere. Hate, anger, bitterness from any type of trauma, any type of hurt, pain, whatever you done been through in your life. Those are fragments that you got to learn lessons from and get it back. Get that power back that was taken from you. Okay, because it's energy. All those, all those different personalities are energies that cause and affect other individuals or your circumstances that is in your environment. Okay, when you got a splinter in the soul. But he said, if you are aware that your soul is energy and it converts into matter, it becomes whole. It becomes whole. So when you start evolving into the multi-sensory perspective or human being, you become more aware of what's going on in your surroundings and you're more mindful on how you act and react to stuff. Because you know the cause and effect that it does to not just you, but the other people that's involved. I got that. I was like, okay, Father, I got that. Now, this right here was kind of powerful to me, too. And I know I always say, because it is. You know, when, you, when you're learning and you're trying to really come into some clarity and understanding about how, how you operate, how this world was created, how everything has evolved and you come into enlightenment, you know, that's powerful to me. I'm excited about that. I got the, I have expanded my mind. I get excited about that. So when, um, I read this part, it says the dynamic of soul to personality, energy to matter lies at the heart of our creation mythology. All right. Now, the story of paradise. That's in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. Okay. And he says, aren't you not metaphorically within a Garden of Eden? When I read this, I said, look at here. Because I always will go back to Genesis because I love reading Genesis. Because it all, it all starts in the beginning. It just all starts in the beginning. Everything else, it starts here. I'm not saying that don't exist and that don't matter in all the books and everything in the word of God because it does. But the beginning actually sets the tone of how everything else began. So when he says that, are you metaphorically within the Garden of Eden, so to speak? He says your own creative reality within which you choose each, which you choose each day. How you will create your reality with the male and female principle inside of you. Adam and Eve, they won. So it's a, it's a divine and a masculine feminine that lives within us. And he said the Adam and Eve principle with the tree representing your personal energy system, your soul. Okay. And he says your own cord of knowledge. That's it. How will you use your power? How will you use your power? Will you create a paradise or will you or will you be cast or will you be cast out as it were? That was so good. That was so good because you know when you think about it, when you start evolving and you come into the understanding of who you really are, when you start evolving and then coming into the understanding of who you really are when it comes to that multi-sensory perspective and you're really trying to just do whatever is necessary to evolve into the wholeness that God wants you to be. It's like you create heaven on earth for yourself because you're being conscious of your choices and your words and your thoughts and the things that you're trying to do in your life. But when you're not conscious, it's like, you know, the casting out to me is the constantly going through the cycles, going through the lessons, going through, you know, not learning, just constantly, just never learning. 
being cast out, not enjoying the paradise that God has for us, not enjoying the harmony, the peace, the unconditional love, the prosperity, the success, the abundance that God has for his people. You know what I'm saying? This is paradise for us. That's paradise. And then he said the challenge to each human, the challenge to each human is creation. Will you create with reverence or will you create with neglect? Okay. And I know in one of his chapters, I'm not sure, you know, but I'm going to talk about a lot of his chapters because in a lot of different portions of his book, and I don't know. I don't know if it's like I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just, I'm just expressing what I know resonate with me and I'm just expressing it through a video verbally and I'm just sharing with people my perspective on different type of areas in his book that have resonated with me since I had been going through my journey. And that, you know, how it really helped me become a better person. How it really helped me see life in a different perspective. You know, it, it's a blessing. And, you know, another part of his book, he talked about, you know, the relationship. And it was in this chapter. It was in um, Intentions 2. This one right here. Chapter 8. It was in this chapter. And he talked about the dynamics of, you know, marriage and spiritual partners. And, you know, I read over it. And, you know, I really kind of meditate on it. And, you know... That's my desire. You know, my desire is to vibrate at a, at a level where I can attract the spiritual partner that God has for me. And, you know, he talks about how, you know, traditional marriages is pretty, you know, the traditional conventional marriages that has been, you know, created in this external world was created based on external things. You know, when we marry people, it's like we marry for security. We marry for, you know, putting the money together, getting a house, getting a nice car, you know, the external stuff, you know, not really marrying for the spiritual growth and the spiritual union that God created before the foundation of the world when he created Adam and Eve, when he created Adam and Eve. I really believe that. You know, a oneness, a oneness, a divine feminine 